Is there a better day to celebrate for those who follow Christ than Easter Sunday? Is there a better time to remember what he did for us and how that he did not stay dead, but he rose again on the third day? And I invite you, silence all your notifications, grab a paper Bible if you have one, get somewhere where you can listen and appreciate and worship the crucified, buried, and resurrected Lord. Thanks for joining us for Easter at Hardin Valley. great music, what great singing this morning. So very thankful for what God is doing in our hearts and in our lives and thankful thankful for the Easter cross-centered music focuses on Jesus suffering, bleeding and dying and so so very appreciative of you and your good singing and and so you had to sing a little extra loudly this morning cuz you're like, man, there's just so much distance between us. And some of you, some of you, your, your spot's not there where it was. And, uh, and that's because a lot of the spots that were on the chairs are not there anymore. And uh, so ice cream sandwiches and, uh, and uh, hot tea and, uh, and somebody's half a pack of double bubble bubble gum, I think. <laughs> and uh, and uh, just like what Jesus did for us, they're gone, gone, gone. Yes, those things are gone. And if you find some, please don't show it to me for a couple of weeks anyway. And uh, some of you are going, I'll find one. And, uh, but we're so thankful. We're thankful to have the, uh, the means and the opportunity to have things uh, professionally clean. And you know what? There's something to be said about getting ready for company. How many of you think it's a good idea if you're going to expect company 
to get ready for company. How many of that makes sense to you? Jeff, it makes sense to you? I'm sorry, there's nine Jeffs in the church. Jeff, 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 Jeff. Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> Dr. Holland over there. And uh, yeah, it makes, and so we, wanna, we want to do that. And so you look around, and I want you to do something for us as we prepare for next week. Just, just imagine that you can't see any, whatever color this is, blue, bluish green. Just imagine that there's hardly any empty chairs in here next week. Does that sound like a, is that a good thought? Now, some of you right now, you already sinned because you're going, well, I have to get here early because I want to sit where I want to sit. And uh, you know who you are. So just get here early so you'll be in a good attitude. And a good, but we want to do that. And we're inviting, we've got to, uh, I think almost 80 people that have said they're coming uh, uh, to, from the community for Easter Saturday, and that's a huge number. That's a huge number on Sunday morning, some days out, because uh, we will have an unbelievable tidal wave of response the closer we get as people are paying attention to Easter weekend events. And so, so we're already thrilled and excited. I appreciate what Andrea said and, uh, and the emphasis and the men's or excuse me, the, uh, the, the early morning prayer group emphasis <clears throat> that, man, we need, to, we need to pray. Understand, we can give away helicopter rides and gift cards and have face painting and, and jump houses and get a crowd. We can get the food trucks out here and give away free lunches and get a crowd. It's not that we don't know how to go crowd. We need to impact the crowd. We need to give the message of Christ to the crowd. Uh, again, just providing a nice service is fine and some fun, but we want to do a little more than that. And that's one of the reasons on purpose, our advertising, the stuff that will go on the road this afternoon, and, and we've already checked with the county and putting in the median, is making sure they understand that we're trying to give not just you know, a nice thing, some candy and, and some fun and stuff, and some, some popcorn and all that, but we're trying to, we're going, to, we're going to tell you about the biblical story of Easter. We're going to give the biblical lesson of Easter. Because all if we did is wave at you and didn't do that, we, we, we didn't do much. There's nothing about that that's sacred, it's only secular. And I, I, want to, I want to meet the point of contact. I want to leverage how much we've kind of messed up this, the idea of Easter with the... With the with all the, the sweets and everything and, and, the, and the little fun stories, with the seriousness and the life change of what Jesus did that we call the Easter season. How many of you think that's a good idea, right? And so that's what's going to separate us from what's going on here, what's going on there. And, uh, and man, I hope you're doing And I hope, you'll, I hope you'll pray. We'll have people that will be on campus this next weekend that won't be on campus any other time. We'll have folks that will see the signs and see how well that the campus looks and the, all the work that you guys have done. And they'll go, man, that, that looks like a place. They got that playground. They got that playground that everybody around here knows they built and opened to the community. And they didn't fence it. And they don't scold you. And what one guy said, <coughs> yeah, and there's, a, there's an old plump guy that works there. And if he's there, he'll let you in the building to go to the bathroom. I don't know how I got to be plump. Uh, I think that's more offensive than FAT. But anyway, anyway, I take bald. <laughs> anyway, but if you see, uh, I reckon it's still when I was still driving the, yeah, if you see his red car, that's what, uh, yeah. And uh, so, so anyway, so maybe they don't know I got, I'm driving a, a truck now. But anyway, that, man, I, that's fine by me. Man, know that about us. And so, won't you pray? Won't you be inviting? Let me encourage you to do this. And again, if you've got some of you're invited and you've not shared that, if you want to with me, I'll add it to my list to pray for. So I've got uh, five folks that I've already tried to nail down. I've got about 25 more I'm going after. I'd love to be the guy with the most visitors here next week, but I'm telling you what, it'd be fine by me if 118, what did you say, 123? How many chairs? 120, 120, even number. 120, somebody help me remember. It'd be fine by me if we get done and we're going, oh, we gotta, we got to do more chairs. I already told the musicians, you may have to sit up here. 
and which means you can't sleep. And uh, so, so we uh, we do that. Of course, we move the baptistry out and then do some things. But but so thankful. I hope you're excited. I hope you'll sign up again. Not asking you to pray for the whole hour. That'd be fine. But uh, some of you, hey, you know what? I'll I'll take the five o'clock hour. I'll pray for Saturday. I'll pray for Sunday. I'll pray for the follow-up after Sunday. Don't miss it. There'll be folks who don't come at your invitation that'll still be appropriate for them to come the week after. Everybody understand that. And, uh, and there'll, be, there'll be accidents and job calls in. There'll be upset stomachs. There'll be, they'll be oversleeping. And that's, they're, they're not off the radar just because they don't make it. So I want to have you. I was thinking again as we get ready to uh, say our verse. I was thinking again. I, uh, I lived uh, two years right at, right at, the, uh, right at the ocean, uh, Pensacola Bay. And, uh, and so it wasn't that uncommon. I, I'd go study sometimes around the bay, but, but then every now and then there was a really good uh, couple of seafood restaurants right there, and you could, you could sit and you could look at the ocean. It was pretty neat. And you'd see people, and they'd have their bucket and their, and their little spade, you know, They'd have their towel, they'd have their hat, and they'd have, F, they'd have SPF 90. You know, they were ready, ready to go. They might have a cooler full of water and soda and stuff. And they were, they were happy, happy. And then you'd see every now and then some other people. And, and they'd be doing this. They didn't want their hair messed up because it's windy. And, and they'd be walking tippy-toed like, I can't believe there's this much sand here at the ocean. And they'd frown, and the people they were with, they'd just be happy. They'd already rolled up their pants like clam diggers. They'd be looking at their toes, going, look at the sand in my toes. And, and, and the other person, and just, just you know, and Sandy, and he's like this. And I'm going, what did you expect? You're at the ocean. The ocean, it's windy. It's sandy. It's amazing. It's amazing. And every now and then I'd be eating, you know, and he'd see somebody like, oh, that's just offensive. What, the salt air? You can't be surprised that it smells like the ocean at the ocean. Here's what I want to remind you. Saturday, don't be going, oh, my hair's messed up. <laughs> I don't want this. Instead, go, man, this is great. There's 400 people here from the community. This is awesome. I'm going to meet all 400 of them. This is awesome. Look at that. Look at that. That kid dove on that egg out there. That kid dove on that egg. I'm going to give him a dollar just for having extra effort. This is going to be the greatest thing. I'm going to do that. Because every now and then we'll have an event like this and people walk around going, I hope I, hope I don't get any of them on me. I hope I don't have to meet anybody. Don't, man, don't do that. And then Sunday, it'll be sideways. TV will blow up. Sound won't work right. Truth of the matter is, if Andre doesn't hurry up and finish my message, the preaching may not be that good. I'm messing. And... Uh, but, I, but, man, I'm on it. I'm in. I'm in. I'm going to sign up for two slots. I got nothing to do, nothing but reruns on now and anyway. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to miss lunch every day this week. Pray. I got unchurched people I'm inviting. I've got unsaved people I'm inviting. I need God to do a miracle in their life. That, that, just, just roll up your pants. Be thrilled for the sand and experience it. Don't, don't try and avoid it. Don't try and avoid it. Every now and then, every now and then people go, well, I'm, there's going to be that many people there. I'm just going to stay home. No, no. Jump in. I hadn't invited anybody. Invite somebody. Invite several somebodies. If we're trying to have 100, we probably need to have about 130 invited just because it's not normal. It's not in their wheelhouse yet. And let God do something marvelous in your life and in our lives. We've been learning, we've been learning some great verses <clears throat> this month, and so we want to continue on there. Stand with us if you would. We're in Matthew 28, 5, 6, and 7. How many of you, how many of you feel a little better when you came in? How many of you excited about what God wants to do? You've been learning these verses. If you don't need to, don't look at the screen or your card. <coughs> Excuse me, but if you need to, you can... You can use the help here. Verse 5, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Let me help you. God doesn't leave us without answers. 
and he for sure doesn't leave us without answers about who Jesus is and what Jesus did. And let me help you, and that Jesus is alive. Verse number 6. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Verse 7. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth forth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And don't you love it? The angel going, I have spoken. I have told you. By the way, I think that's still the message of the church. He is risen. He is risen. I mean, if you think that'd be pretty good, right? Forward's a great thing, but we could have put for he, or he is risen. That would have been a good T-shirt banner too, right? Because it's a great, wonderful, life-changing, the Bible truth that we get to cling to, particularly this time of the year. You can be seated. You can be seated. Again, we're thankful. Thank you for being uh, amenable to spreading things out a little bit and in anticipation of what to And thank you to the men. We had about a dozen fellows go to uh, the men's conference, God's Man Conference. We had a great time. We're still all a little cheesed off at Bobby. He got the biggest steak and had a potato about the size of two fists. And, uh, and so anyway, he didn't share, and, and he had dessert. So, uh, Bobby, you cannot go anywhere else with us this year. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. But we had a great time. God spoke to our hearts. Got to hear from some of the, some of the young men and, uh, and, and just so, so very thankful. As you, uh, as you give, as you plan to give, as you're generous, as you're generous, I want to remind you, God gave everything. I would not, I would be, I would be bashful, recalcitrant, and unbelievably awkward at my age right now asking for you to give me something. I, I think I, I, don't, I don't even know how I would do that. <clears throat> it, it would have to be a dire need. I think I'm, I'm, I'm at the stage of whatever that I don't, I barely like borrowing anything because I, I don't want to mess it up. I just, I'm just kind of there. And I need, that's just pride. But I have absolutely no bashfulness. <laughs> I have no shyness. I have no recalcitrant. I have none of that asking you to be generous toward the Lord. I have none. One, you'll never outgive him. You've never lost anything you've given to him. And what he does in return is just only he gets the glory and the credit. And I can do you better than a, than a just-issued eye bond. I can do you better than the dizzying heights of crypto trading. I can do you better than if you'd bought and invested in the real estate market 10 years around here. I can give you an internationally diversified fund that has never lost a return. And because those investments are eternal, what you leave here stays here. What you send on ahead goes on forever. And part of what you're doing is investing, as Riley said, in the work of international missions, particularly when the Samburu people there in Kenya. And you'll get to hear from them in just a moment. And when that's done, after the video plays, then, uh, or excuse me, while the video plays, our young folks, you can... Uh, you can be dismissed back to junior church and all, so. Hello, Hardin Valley friends. We just wanted to update you. We're back safely in Cessia and getting back in the groove here. Uh, it's been a rough couple of months. Um, we've had some <laughs> um, issues with some brewery leaders, some integrity problems. We had to let them go and um, and then we've had some ongoing unresolved family issues. And so, and then I was in the hospital for a few days while we were in the US. So a lot of stuff going on, but you know, that happens when the Lord's doing great things. Yeah, but well, we're grateful for your prayers, really sustains us. Mm -hmm. And it's helped the church here has uh, 
overcome some of the challenges with the leadership that we had. Continuing on, um, even we were in the States, uh, the church really didn't move backwards at all, which is what we want. We've got some Baru leaders currently training uh, three men and six women in the storying process so they can teach God's word. The ladies will start groups of women or children. And the men are current leaders or future leaders for churches, and so we're grateful for that. Thank you for your faithful support uh, financially, but more than that, your prayers. Yes. We just ask you to pray for the church here, continue to be strong, and pray for us physically. Uh, it is hot. <laughs> really hot. <laughs> and wearing us out. And I think the U.S. wore us out a bit. And uh, physically, we just need God's sustaining grace. Thank you, Hardin Valley Church. We love you all. Grateful for you. God, God bless, bless you. you. Amen. Amen. Thank you that you get to hold up their hands. We get to do that, and uh, we are we are excited about that. Um, open your Bibles, if you would. John 19, John 19, and uh, verse 30. John, or excuse me, John 19, verse uh, 25. Hope you got a hand as you came in. <clears throat> John 19, <clears throat> John 19, and uh, let's read these verses together. Would you stand one more time? Stand one more time. I think I've got everything, got the note that was given, yeah, all right. John 19, verse 25, you're willing and able. Verse 25, now they stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. If you like, if you like these things, if you'll mark that down, when Jesus appears post-resurrection and he's walking there, he's going to be walking with the relative of Cleopas. Mary Magdalene, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Last year at this season, uh, this, uh, this occasion, we walked through some of those sayings of Jesus from the cross, and we are ticking them off now. Verse 27, Then saith he to the disciples, Behold thy mother. From that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. One last sip of something so he could finish speaking. Verse 29, there was set a vessel full of vinegar. They filled a sponge with vinegar, put it on hyssop, put it up to his mouth. Not terribly unlike what some of you would use for a loofah. Not exactly like a sea sponge, but, but enough, uh, enough roughness to it that it would carry a few drops to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. One word, tetelestai. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost, a euphemism for death. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath, that Sabbath was a high day, it's the culmination of the Passover week, besought Pilate, their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. Crucifixion could take two, three, four days, depending upon the strength and the physical condition of the person being crucified. If they did this, then they would literally drown in their, drown in their own fluid as they were not able to exhale. Then came the soldiers, break the legs of the first and the other, the two thieves on the other sides of the cross. <clears throat> Verse 35, when they came to Jesus, saw he was dead already, they break not his legs. One of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. Forthwith there came blood and water. And he saw that it bare record, and his record is true, and he knows that he saith true that you might believe. For these things were done that the Scripture fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken, and another. The Scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they have pierced, whom they have pierced. What does it mean? What does it mean when Jesus says, it is finished? Would you pray with me one more time? Front to back, left to right, Lord, speak to hearts, I pray. Help me to focus not on the, not on the distractions, not on the burdens, not on the, <coughs> the things that uh, are ahead, but just for a moment, help me think here. And God, would you speak to our hearts? Oh, Holy Spirit of God, move in us. We are desensitized to what's going on here. We are calloused and bored, and we need, it seems like, a revolution in our minds about what really is transpiring. So would you do that right now? Would you speak to us in a real, in an, in an, in an awesome way, in a personal way? May I communicate clearly? 
And Lord, may I, may I, may I as I preach on the outside, may you, may you deal with us on the inside. So Father, help. Lord, if there's someone here today who doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I, I pray right now, in particular, that you would speak to them and draw them to yourself. We ask all this in your son's wonderful name. And amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. One of the things I enjoyed so much the last several years is walking and working, reworking through, through these, uh, these uh, days of the Passion Week. And I, I have just so enjoyed it. And, if, uh, and we looked extensively at uh, four or five of the sayings on the cross, Jesus' last words, and those are available online. You can look at those, rewatch those. And, and I tried to focus in particular on this one, the, the it is finished here. And I think there's so much misunderstanding, and I just felt really led to revisit this. And again, it's been a year, and, and, and we may not remember all that. Uh, I say that with a smile on my face, a lot of water in that bridge. But because it is the high point, it is what we must understand, must understand. And I want to answer two questions, just, just a couple ideas this morning. What does it mean when he says it is finished? What is finished, in other words? What is finished? And then how is it finished? I think those are two fair words. By the way, isn't that normal in our lives? What do you mean? And how did that happen? And uh, any parent in here ever use that expression? What, what happened? How did it happen? I understand, but the laundry is on the ceiling fan. How did this happen? And, uh, you know, because you don't want to ask why, right, if you're, if you're an adult. If you're an adult asking somebody else why, it's already passing, right? And you don't, so we're going to search those two things. What is finished? What does it mean it is finished? And how is it finished? And so if you've got your notes there, maybe this will help you and we'll follow along there. I've mentioned again, I think there are six things we often miss in the story of Easter. We forget, <clears throat> we forget in the sanitized Easter egg, bright outfits, family dinner, cultural cultural whitewash that we have done to Easter, and we forget that there is so much shame in the apostles and disciples' life. By the way, and the others who just ran off. He had 5,000 people, men chasing him, plus their families looking for another free meal. They are nowhere to be found right now. Their sorrow, they really believe he's dead. They really are watching him die. Jesus' earthly mother, Mary, is there watching her boy be executed. They're scared. They are scattered and running. <clears throat> and Peter, in particular, will deny him once, twice, and three times because he is terrified of what the Romans are going to do to him. Judas can't deal with the guilt. Judas is scared. He tries to return the money. They say, no deal. They take that money. They buy a place to bury him after he takes his own life. There is the plan of salvation accomplished. We'll see this morning. And there throughout the Easter story is sin. We could no more have done a sillier thing by representing Easter with bright colors and new clothes in one sense. Because we just miss a little bit, at least, that it is so much a story of sin. It is so much a story of our sin and Jesus' payment for our sin. And so I want to walk through. I want to answer those couple of questions there. So what is finished, and how is it finished? Number one, what is finished? The sacrificial system is finished. You say, it is finished? What do you mean there? Because when we say it is finished, we use it, we use it either, <clears throat> we use it sometimes exasperately. It's never going to be finished. There is so much laundry. I am never going to get this house clean. It will never get my taxes finished. This is never ending, never ending. My wife on occasion says, if someone brings one more dirty dish down here, don't. You know, and that's not really good grammar, but she communicated very well. And, and, and we're there. We're there when the children are little. It's a never ending supply of dirty clothing and all those kind of, we use a sense of exasperation. We will use it sometimes as a sense of the completion. That's what's going on here. The word is tetelesti. It's one word in English. We translate it as three words here. It is the idea of something that is completed. 
It is the idea of something that's completed in the past with an ongoing effect in the future. By the way, that's a good thing to say about the cross, isn't it? It's a one action that happened in the past with an ongoing action in the future. Historians and those of that time would recognize that as an accounting word. When someone owed a bill and the debt was paid, they would write tetelestai on the bill. It has been paid for, the debt is done, and now whatever has been purchased is yours. And everything, the transaction is complete. When Jesus is saying it is finished, he's not saying they won, he's saying he won. When he's not saying that they were victorious, he was saying, I am victorious. It is finished. It's an exaltation. It's a demonstration. It is him a saying that it has been accomplished. No more the past. All is good going forward. It is finished. When he says it is finished, what's finished? It's the sacrificial system is finished. Millions and millions of lambs, millions and millions of birds, millions and millions of, of cows, millions and millions of goats, on and on. The temple, whatever you think. If you think it's more museum, uh, I get that from maybe the way we've portrayed it through the years. It was a lot more like a restaurant. Lots of baking, cakes, <coughs> excuse me, bread, stuff being ground up, animals being butchered. Them being barbecued, a portion go to the priest, some of it totally consumed. It was so associated with the feast. It was a hub of activity. There was accounting done there, all these offerings. And all this system pointing to the insufficiency of what you and I could do. Sacrifice, butcher, barbecue, a cow on Monday, you got to do it again on Tuesday. Sacrifice a couple of birds. Barbecue them, got to do it again, got to do it again, got to do it again, got to do it again. It's never enough. No animal could pay the penalty for your sin. No good deed. There's not enough money in the world to pay the debt that you and I owe. The sacrificial system. Jesus is the Passover lamb. Once for all, slain for all men. It is finished. You believe that? Say amen. Secondly, it's Jesus suffering for our sin. And I, and I want to I work, work through this. Jesus suffering for all sin. Jesus could do that because he perfectly kept the law. Jesus could do that because he, being holy, paid our debt to the holiness and justice of God. And all that's been paid for. And we've said that several weeks now. And I don't want to repeat that. But if you don't understand that, or if you have questions, please see one of us. Please see me. Let me walk you through that. If you're still thinking you're helping God in your salvation, or as soon as you get good enough, I'm always amazed. People, you talk to them and they'll go, or as soon as I get this squared away, as soon as I get married, as soon as I quit drinking, as soon as I get off drugs, as soon as I get a better job, as soon as I, uh, as soon as I get a few things, I got a few projects at the house, as soon as I do this. And what they're trying to say is, as soon as I get cleaned up, then I'll be ready to be with the Lord. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you. Not only does that not the way it works, but that never works. Because there's never going to be a day coming when you're good enough to finally be with God. God says, hey, I see you right where you are in your mess and in your sin and in your self-righteousness, and I come to you and I change your life from there. I change your life from there. Years ago, we were serving as interim in Smithfield, North Carolina. <clears throat> we were about uh, 12, 15 miles from where I grew up, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed eating at some of my childhood restaurants while we were there serving. And a guy in his a guy, and his, uh, guy and his girlfriend were, were coming. I didn't know them. Some folks had invited them, and they were there. And she, she spoke English second language, and <clears throat> so she was always a beat or two behind. And I had to be careful not to use, you know, you know silly things that, that just didn't translate very well. And, and uh, so I, I made me very conscious of that years ago and try to do that now. But <clears throat> and he got saved. I mean, God saved told his buddies he got saved 
And man, it was glorious. And, and uh, he, he walked an aisle, came up and shook my hand and, and, uh, and gotten saved. Man, it was great. And we partnered with somebody to, to work on him. But his, but his uh, girlfriend's fiance would not say. And, and he asked her and she was no. And the guy that was mentoring and discipling him talked to him. No. Guy's wife, Pam, talked to her. No. Don't you understand your sin? Oh, yeah, I got that. Don't you understand? Yeah. And all this. And she says, I can't get saved until I get married. And they said, what do you mean? She says, I, she said, I can't do that. Can't do that. And so he's passed on now. But anyway, he looked at her. He said, he said, I'm a preacher. He was a retired preacher. He said, I'm a preacher. You will get your license. I'll marry you. I'll marry you, and then you get saved. She said, fine. She said, fine. She was so stuck there. Man, they went to the courthouse. They ended up just doing the justice of peace, came back. He <coughs> came back. She was in tears. She said, I can get saved. And she was so stuck on that. He just took the obstacle out of the way. And he finally, later on, right before I left, she's like, you know, I understand now. I needed to get saved right then. I didn't need to wait on this other. And she and they were, uh, I, last time I saw them, they'd had a few kids still in the church, and God was using and blessing them and all those kind of things. But when we get stuck in some of those areas, I'd remind you, when he said it is finished, you and I contribute nothing. He has made access to him available now. He has paid your sin debt. All of that's done. And how did he do it? He did it as he suffered for us. He suffered for us. If, you, if you're still tracking with me, say amen. Suffer for us. I think I've listed for you. These wounds, doctors, physicians, they look at the crucifixion of Christ. Sometimes they'll come up with five, sometimes six. I offer you the six to maybe help you. The first wound Jesus would suffer is a contusion. Is a contusion. Someone told me when I turned 40, you're going to have more bruises now because you're going to bump into things. And when you turn 50, you're going to bump into things and you won't remember where you got the bruise. And at 60, you'll just be a bruise. And I need more people like that in my life to encourage me. And uh, anybody in here, that's your testimony? I don't, I don't know where did that come from. There's no wondering what happened to Jesus. He said the soldiers buffeted him, Matthew 27. If you've been in a fight long enough, you know there's two things, you, two things that are wear out. One, if you put your thumb inside your fist, you're going to break your thumb pretty quickly. Two, the more you hit with your hand, the more likely you are to break your hand. However, if you need to deal damage, those of you who have taken martial arts lessons, if you need to deal damage, the heel of your hand, excuse me, the, the, the outside of your hand can do a lot of damage, but the palm, the thumb, thrust the heel of your hand can do an unbelievable amount of damage. Take after take after take in a martial arts movie, you won't see them do this, you will see them do this if they're really striking the wood. Those Roman soldiers had been taught to deal the maximum amount of damage to the victim and not yourself, you thrust up and you punctuate it with the weight of the heel of your hand. They said they beat him. Prophesy who struck you. Isaiah would come to describe this scene that his face was so marred and so swollen that he no longer resembled a man. He suffered the laceration when they began to whip him with the cat of nine tails, the scourging. These were the executioner's tools. This was not a punishment tool. The best records we have from the time was that the victim would have his hands tied together. Then those hands via rope would be lashed to a post. He would be extended out defensively, one rope on each foot. So the four soldiers, one to take care of securing <coughs> to the post, the two on either side, the four men would serve as these executioners. And they would take what they called a cat of nine tails, or in English... Some say it was just rocks and stone and bits of metal. Others have said they found some that had little weighted lead-type balls attached to it. 
It was simply meant to deliver the maximum amount of damage. I am in the minority. I do not believe Jesus was beaten 40 stripes save one. That was for Romans. If he did that, it was a courtesy. They would have beaten him with that cat of nine tails until they were tired or told to stop. And he is there. He has no clothing on. More, they were almost always done completely naked. He is completely defenseless. Feet extended, hands extended. Face was fair game. Neck was fair game. Upper torso, lower torso. Bottom of, excuse me, the front of his legs, back of his legs. Completely and utterly defenseless. The executioner would take and would whip Crack the whip, and those nine strands of leather and glass and rock would latch onto the flesh. He would set it like a hook on a fish and pull back. Many times ribs were broken. More often than not, they would die from simple act of the scourging. They would play games with the victims. How long can they live? And over and over and over again. And by the way, if it was just 39. I've said it a few times these past weeks. Jesus being lily white and long hair and soft hands is not the picture of Jesus in the scripture. He is absolutely a man. He suffered the contusion. He suffered the laceration. He suffered the abrasion. The abrasion at the very least... What would have happened is they put the cross on his back uh, a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, as I was uh, walking the walking the journey of shingles, somebody asked me what was it like for the first three weeks. I said it was. I said it was like somebody took a bunch of barbed wire and raked me front and back, and then 12 hours later they did it again. I don't ever want to do that again. Can you imagine being torn all to pieces and someone taking a rough piece of wood and scrubbing it across your exposed wound? Can you imagine the last bit of dignity you have is your beard and soldiers out of pure malice raking that off of your face? He suffered the abrasion. He suffered the penetration. Those Palestinian thorns, and I really do need to find mine that I have from there. I, I've never been, able, I, I, since we moved, I haven't been able to put my hands on them. Inch, inch and a half, when they dry out, they resemble more nail than they do thorn. They said they platted them, and they mashed them into the thin skin on his head. Swollen from the beating, gashed wounds from his beard being plucked out, and now face and neck covered in a thin ribbon of blood. He suffered the perforation. We read it in these verses. Jesus has passed. He's given up the, his life. And for meanness, the sharp edge of the spear on the, on the wooden shaft and they came in this way. The best description here is that they would come in under the rib cage up through to where his heart is. The pericardial sac is that shock absorber, that fluid sac that gives some comfort and relief. He said, and they pierced that, the descriptor, blood and water ran out. For pure meanness, they did this to him. Jesus also suffered hematidrosis. It's an action where the body is under such dire stress that the capillaries burst, burst near the sweat glands. And he's prayed in agony in the garden. And the Bible says, as it were, great drops of sweat perfused from him. When he says it is finished, his suffering is finished. If you check out right now, don't hear another word I say in the next two or three minutes, four minutes. You understand he's doing that for you. He's doing that for your sin. 
Next time you use a profanity, that's what he suffered for. Next time you blow off what, to, what sinful habit you're doing, remember, that's what he died for. The next, time, the next time you do something that offends the heart of God, you remember, he bled and suffered and died for you. And it is finished is too small a word to capture the emotion of the moment. But it is the greatest word because it is complete. It is finished. His suffering is done. He suffered emotionally. He suffered watching his mother and his family suffer and his disciples. He suffered being, as it were, uh, he says, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And Scripture doesn't, doesn't elaborate on that. But the agony, the spiritual agony, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, For he became sin for us who know no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He felt guilt. He felt shame. He felt the punishment of God. What is finished? The plan of God's complete. It's complete. Why can we offer to the neighborhood? Because the plan of God's complete. <clears throat> Why can we sing the songs? Because the plan of God is complete. The Old Testament, every lamb, every dove, <clears throat> every cow, every goat, everyone had been building up to the Messiah who would come, who would take away the sin of the world. It is complete. And he provides us perfect righteousness. I love songs about heaven. Stay with me. <clears throat> Man, I like thinking about folks that I love who've gone on before. You want to get me real happy and get me real misty, you, you start going down that road. I do not need heaven. I need to be right with God. Heaven is just the icing on the cake. I need my punishment dealt with. I am guilty. Folks, make all these dumb things. God doesn't care about this and blah, blah, blah. And well, that's your opinion, blah, blah, blah. May I point you to a bloodstained cross where the verdict was issued about your sin and mine? And you set your priorities there all of a sudden. By the way, and that puts the premium. Sick, <clears throat> walking well, not walking well. It is our joy and privilege to tell the 50,000 people live within five miles of this building that it is finished and that their sin debt has been paid for and that they don't have to pay the punishment for their sin because Jesus has accomplished redemption on the cross and your righteousness has been provided for. I leave you with these. We're done. He was crucified. He's not still being crucified. He's not still suffering. It is done. It is finished. I was in Brazil. They took me to a statue, and they said the statue every so often They've recorded what they believe to be the statue of, of Jesus and in the, in the, in the sanguination from this uh, wooden stone statue. And I go, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it was rust and corrosion, some natural thing somebody got a photograph of. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know if it's a demon masquerading and trying to lead people into more darkness. But I can assure you one thing, he's not still suffering. He's not still suffering. He's not still being crucified. It is finished. It is finished. He's not it is finished, not Jesus is finished. We sang it this morning, the story of Lazarus. Four days too late, he's still, he's still on time. I can assure you one thing. Three days later, he is alive. Up from the grave, he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. You say, Pastor, why are we talking about it? Because this is the day to talk about it. This is the time to remember. He has risen. He is about to ascend. He's going to come back. Everything is done. It is finished. Not he is finished. Jesus is alive. Jesus is active. And what God did on the cross, you have nothing to add to. When I get, nope. When I stop, nope. Well, I, I can't give right now. I can't uh, serve right now. I'm, I'm work. Nope. There's no works. There's no penance. There's not enough candles to light. There's not enough 
self-flagellation. You read the scarlet letter and Dimsdale's so upset and he takes, the, he takes his own cord and he whips himself because he's committed adultery with this woman. And what he figures out is he's just as miserable and as unforgiven as he's ever been. And Hawthorne portrays perfectly, you can do anything you want to yourself and all that to your body, and you're still not adding one thing to the finished work of Christ on Calvary. You can accept it or not, but there's no amount of punishment, no amount of pilgrimage. You can journey, you can do all the things, you can go and, and be all over the place, you can climb the mountain, you can, go, you can take your hodge, whatever you want to do, there's no penalty well, I don't deserve it. Well, you're in good shape because not a person in this room deserves it. It is the free, not cheap, free. Free in the sense that you cannot buy it. Free like love. You cannot buy it. You cannot earn it. It has been offered to you. It's not about ethnicity. It's not for American folks, American Indian folks, not for African American folks, not for Asian folks, not for Jewish folks, not just for Gentile folks. It is not an ethnic thing. It is a sin thing. And humanity has a sin problem. And Jesus says, I have taken care of the sin problem and wrote, it is all taken care of on the debt that you owe. And it's sure not about law keeping. I'll just do better. If you think that this is only for the guy who's been sleeping outside and only for the lady who's been stepping out on her husband and only for the little fella down there who's been selling drugs on the corner and only for the guy on TV who gets caught running a scam and a scheme and, and, and trying to rob folks with some kind of pyramid deal. If you think it's only for other wicked people, you miss the point. It's for you. It's for me. And Jesus says it is finished. It is finished.